my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Hello. We're back with episode six of our continuing studies of API 579.1, part three, brittle fracture assessments. And in this episode, we're going to take an example from uh, 3.5. It's a level two assessment, and it's found in, this, in the example, a problem guide called API 579-2. We're going to, it's primarily going to be dealing with 2007 example because that was the example was the manual was written in 2009, but we'll allude to 2016 to, to make it more current. So what we're going to do is in this episode, we're going to look at the method A technique called the pressure temperature curves and, and use that as uh, to develop a mat curve so we can compare it to the CET curve and to ensure that we're not operating in the brittle part of the uh, of the curve. So let's continue with our studies. I want to the problem is we're going to develop a mat table, you know, minimum level of temperature for materials uh, for the shell section of a reactor. So we're given that the vessel was constructed, the boiler pressure vessel code has me, section eight, division one, and the material was constructed to SA204 grade B, 1993, allowable stress, we looked the example gives you that allowable stress, and we found it to be 17.5 or 120 mega. Furthermore, we find that the inside diameter is 234 inches, 5.943 meters, and the thickness is 2.7. 72 inches or 69 millimeters thick. The mat is minus is 108 degrees Fahrenheit or 42 centigrade. And we are in curve A of figure 3.4. Now, if you want to learn how to do that, there's earlier episodes uh, that we go through this in extreme detail. Start up pressure is 240 PSIG or 1654 KPA. Now we have 240 PSIG. We have a well deficiency of 1.0. We have an, a corrosion allowance of a sixteenth of an inch, which is three millimeters. We have no test, impact test data available. A number of methods at disposal. Method A, which is uh, called a pressure temperature within the safety operating envelope. Method B is, is a qualification by hydro test, field testing, and also qualification of materials and construction, service environment and experience. So that's the experience component. The one we're going to look at is this. It's more math intensive and it's more applicable to what we're trying to learn today. There's a few more litmus test we have to do well we've con we've confirmed that we're constructing this to ASME section 8 division 1 you can also do it to this analysis to division 2 as well the the options are option a governed thickness and exemption curves and the second one was impact test results so uh, as we dig into it where we were going to go and follow this because we had no impact tests some results available to do our analysis. So we, we continue with method A. We're going to follow step 1.4, paragraph 3421C. And I believe that's the same for both editions. And we determined the mat from figure 3.4 is applicable 
it's a toughness curve in governing thickness. And, um, and what we find out is we're at 2.72 in inches or 69 millimeters thick. And our mats at 100, as a result, is 108 Fahrenheit and 42, 42 degrees centigrade. And so, you know, the applicability, uh, we have to use a curve A of figure 3.4. So we've confirmed that by just doing some checking. So we're going to continue here. So we've got option A, follow step 1.4, paragraph 3421C. And if we were looking for, if we had flanges, then we would have to follow the minus 29 rule. Uh, and of course, it's not applicable. The second let test would be the thickness. We're definitely thicker than 2.5 millimeters, it's not applicable. And uh, there's no mention of the post well heat treatment. So we can't, um, you know, take advantage of that. Okay, so let's let's continue. And let's go into our stress ratio. So now we have a number of methods, the thickness method, and we have the stress method, and we have the pressure temperature method. So we're gonna go look at the pressure test method. Look at determining the reduction in mat based upon the the ratio, the stress ratio. We have to follow a note two curve or a point four curve uh, for the following reason. The real reason is because we're equal to or less than 17.5. Our example told us that our allowable stress at room temperature falls in that criterion. So we, we have to use a curve that follows along that pattern. So the other reasons you may use that is the boiler pressure vessel code prior to 1999, which is not applicable in our case. And um, if we had piping designed to B311, prior to 2002, which is also not applicable. We've constructed this curve. We know that the maximum pressure for this unit is at 390. So the, the, the pressure over the rating pressure is 1.0. And so here there's no reduction, of course, and we have our original 108 degrees Fahrenheit, which we found from curve A and, and also from what they told us in the example. And then we just take simply take uh, I, we based upon, you know, using a nice, nice number like 0.9. So if I took 0 0.9 times 390, I get 351 and so on all the way down this list. And then I go to those, that curve earlier and then I, we find our reduction factors. So then we just subtract that 108, subtract 10 and we get 98 and we continue down. But something interesting happens. We remember our 0.4 curve, which we determined earlier. Well, that tells us that we have to use minus 50, 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Even if we have a stress ratio of 0.1, we still have to use that factor. Those, those are the rules. We have this great, very useful curve, and it can tell us a lot about our unit. For example, the, C, the CET must be greater than the mat. Okay, so that's the the um, the pressure the the process temperature for the unit, and this is the material available temperature. So, so now, for example, if you know you need if they need to operate at a lower a lower uh, temperature, you one strategy is available in your toolbox now is you can reduce your pressure in your unit. So for example, if you reduce your pressure all the way down to 240 PSIG, which corresponds to a stress ratio, you can take advantage of the stress ratio and reduce your temperature by 40 degrees to get yourself down to, uh, to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And now you, you can drop your CET in certain cases. So a very, very useful curve for making operating decisions uh, to improve safety. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. 
This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.